your host, Mama Helen Norisha Jaffor. Well, well, well. Welcome to Mama Helen and you hold the way from Wari, Nigeria today. I am extremely excited because I know that what we're going to be deliberating on, it's not only just for those who are married, but even the ones who are expecting or wanting to get married someday. And that's the more reason why it is so important that you do not miss today's Mama Helen and you because it's all capped out for you. And today's topic is compatibility in other words are we compatible compatibility is being able to exist live or work successfully with someone or, or something else without problems or conflict though two no two people i beg your pardon are perfect match by nature it is absolutely normal for it to feel difficult sometimes especially when you find the number of big differences between you and your partner. However, there is no greater feeling than joining forces with the person you have selected to spend your life with, to tackle life's frustrations and challenges. So conversely, having someone to share the joys and sorrows of life, even when they do not see them exactly as you do, is equally as meaningful hmm i'm already excited because today on mama helen you will be dwelling on this very vital topic and i know that you will all be blessed so back in a moment it is still mama helen and you don't touch the dial Welcome back. This is still Mama Helen and you all the way from Wari, Nigeria today. Are you excited already? Yes. I'm sure you really can't wait to hear some of the things that we're going to be discussing today on Mama Helen and you. Now, I am not going to be doing this alone because I have three wonderful experts with me today. The number one person is Harlison Hinds. Uh, Tall. Um, he's actually going to be joining us. He's a pastor and a relationship coach. He'll be joining us um, virtually today. And then we also have um, um, pharmacist, you know, Bong Josiah. She is a family life coach as well. And then, of course, with me on set here today in Wari is Mrs. Hello. Eguega, and she's a lecturer and information marketing coach. It's such a pleasure today. I mean, seeing all of you, wouldn't you want to say something? Definitely. Uh, happy, aren't you? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Awesome. Nigeria. Good, awesome. <laughs> what have you, Pastor? Love what have you, you Pastor? Awesome, awesome. And then our pharmacist in the house as well. Good afternoon, everyone. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's just get to the topic of today because I know our viewers can't even wait. Um, for, for especially for those who are intending to get married. Okay, okay. Uh, or maybe they're in one relationship or the other. Yeah. And of course, this compatibility topic, it's something that is very, very important, even those who are married as well. So the very first question here is, what does it mean to be compatible with someone? Or should I start with, what is compatibility? Let's look at that word first. Oh. Compatibility. Okay. Okay. Uh, what was what, what started up first uh, from the guest in house? Yes, I will see it as um, a peaceful coexistence between you and your supposed partner. partner. When you say you are compatible with someone, it means that 
I'm at peace with you. Yes. When I'm with you, I can feel you. I can connect with you. Mm -hmm. I can be vulnerable in your presence. Exactly. It shouldn't be totally absence of issues and challenges and problems. Those can actually surface, but mm -hmm. I am compatible with you, Mama Helen. That mm -hmm. means I'm free in your presence. I'm free in your presence. I can be I, me. I can, I can be me. I can be I, me. I don't need to pretend your presence. Awesome. I love that. I, 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 I'm me. Your, this is me. This is who I am. And then, so, of course, we can flow together. And that can actually take away pretense. I'm not trying to make up. That's true. But this is just a real me. This is so a real me. It's true alignment between you Two and people. your supposed partner. partner. Awesome. Partner to be. Okay. I've, I wouldn't know if any of our virtual um, guests would like to interject in any way. Okay. Okay. For me, I'll say compatibility means that both partners understand each other and accept each other's life's principles, philosophy, and goals. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's taking it deeper now. I know our pastor might also have something to say as well. What yeah, um, I think majorly um, compatibility I had to do with, you know, accepting um, the, the, the components of each other's lives. So that has to do with like, um, um, we've, we've mentioned goals, visions, plans, um, characters, and all of that. So compatibility majorly has to do with accepting the components, and I might add the major components of a person's life without, you know, uh, having to 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 change them or make them change them, to change conflict. That's that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So then, if we want to bring it down in the context of today's um, show or topic, as it were, uh, what are the examples of a compatible relationship? What are the examples of a compatible relationship? Well, I would say in a relationship that there is little, I will not use the word absence of challenges, absence of uh, chaos or absence of um, issues, but there is little, minimal amount of crisis and dispute and conflict. So I can say, if a relationship has little or no conflict, you can say they are compatible. That means they understand themselves very well. They have accepted their differences, they have accepted their inadequacies, and they can actually cope with each other and flow with each other. But when it now comes to every little thing we are disputing there are conflicts there are issues arising you, call, you quarrel everything. over everything we quarrel over everything <laughs> we are disagreeing on everything yes we are not actually coming to terms on issues and matters okay we can't, we can't say we are compatible we let's see. look at uh, from the bible biblical aspect relationship between um david and jonathan mm -hmm. there was something flowing we're actually going to the same direction. direction. Let's look at um, Abigail and her supposed husband before uh -huh. he got married to David. Exactly. There was no compatibility. You okay. know, so when issues are always coming up mm -hmm. and we can't deal with them, mm -hmm. we are not seeing that there will not be challenges, there will not be issues, there will not be differences, but that we can actually understand ourselves and come to a common ground is limited. Okay. So when you say certain examples of compatibility in relationship is that we can actually do things together. We can issues. do things together. Awesome. Awesome. I, I, I'll just have the uh, uh, pharmacists in the house, you know, uh, of our opinion regarding this. I mean, what are the examples? I know, you know, I don't want to get because, I mean, it could be husband and wife. It could be um, your children. It could be, you know, and all that. But in a nutshell, what are the examples? To add to what the last speaker has spoken, every person has a value system that drives him or her. And so, if I have a value system that drives me, then to be compatible means that my goals, my principles, like I had mentioned earlier, and my value system aligns with that of my partner. So we are mutually connected. Something, something drives us. 
We are all okay. going to the future we can see. Beautiful, beautiful. How do you know if your relationship is compatible then, Pastor? How do you know if your relationship is compatible? How do you know if you are compatible with each other? How do you know if your relationship is compatible? I think there are uh, big pointers that tells us if a relationship is compatible or not, or if uh, two people are compatible together. First off, I would like to establish that no one is perfect. No one is perfect. So there is no perfect partner. There's no perfect marriage. No such thing as a perfect union. All of these candlelights and butterflies and love at first sight. We met in three months and we got married in two weeks. You know, there is no perfect um, marriage or spouse. However, we have pointers. And I think the first thing that I would like to mention is how do you know if that relationship is compatible. First thing is, you don't want to change anything about that, that person. You wouldn't want to change anything about change that person. Anything about it. It's not like you will not find certain areas where you don't you don't totally agree with or where you don't have you know reservations. But the major characters, the major components of that person's life, you will not want to alter them. For instance, if he's a doctor and you know firsthand that he's a doctor and, and he's coming to, to propose to you, you wouldn't, and you know within you that you don't want to marry a doctor. You would rather want to marry a banker. You don't then accept the proposal from the doctor with an intention of trying to make them leave the hospital to the banking hall later on okay you don't try to want to marry a career in your mind you want a woman that will be a stay-at-home wife and then later you, you are, you are trying it's to not going to work so it is not going to work so the first thing is you don't want to change anything you don't want to change anything major but there are little things that we all make changes we all make adjustments for instance in my marriage my wife and i we are going on and off all the time about how careless i am with eating many times i don't finish my food and i don't remember to cover it and we go on and off every time about it on and off every time okay so basically you don't want to change anything about anything major about that person the second thing i'd like to mention quickly is you share common interests and goals okay am i still on please you've done, you've done very well i mean to be honest with you that that's the truth i mean well let me let me throw this in though um it's com you know because we know that the definition for compatibility simply says two people existing together without um, having conflict yeah. or something of that nature. But is it really, I mean, please, is it, is it really possible for two people who are compatible to never quarrel? Because there's this, there's this adage, you know, from my place, if two brothers steps out of a, of a little room or a bedroom smiling, they must have gone to lie to each other. If two brothers step out of the room, living room, you know, I mean, smiling, they must have gone to lie to each other. But if they've come out smiling, uh, you know, frowning, then evidently they must have told each other the truth. So is it possible uh, for two people who are compatible to only just be smiling? <laughs> uh, put, the, put the kettle on. Yes, baby. Um, you know, so how are you doing? Oh, I'm good, I'm baby. I'm fine. And so from 24 7 it's all peace what do you think what do you have to say because that is it, is it possible though is it real is it real it's not real it's it is uh, an assumed um marriage it is it is it is fake it's not real you know one of the things that we should establish when we are talking about compatibility is the fact that being compatible doesn't mean that there is an absolute absence of of fight or but the truth about it is when there are quarrels we will always fight fair always fight safe the other one will be willing to listen to the other and one will be willing to make adjustments so it is not compatibility that it's not the absence of quarrels and misunderstandings it is the presence of understanding and fighting fair 
So if we have disagreement, understanding and fighting fair. I love that. We fight fair. It shows Perfect. that we are compatible. Okay. So what makes couple incompatible then? What makes couple incompatible? Let me go to a pharmacist before I come down to the lady in the yes. Okay, what makes couples plenty, incompatible? When two parts have no goals, when they have no plans, when they can't be themselves, when they are at different intellectual levels, when they have no similar interests, like the pastor mentioned, this partner wants to do this and this other partner wants to do this. I want to marry a banker and then a, a doctor comes to propose to me. Why say yes? when I know that actually I want a banker. So I'm starting from the proposal stage to create trouble. So this takes me again back to the value system. Do I know what I really want? Does my partner Does know my what partner we really want? So we must know what we want, come together, and we come together, we are able to align. Yeah. Even if when there's love, no matter how powerful that love, that attraction is, Compatibility can be done in different levels. We have the emotional compatibility, intellectual compatibility, spiritual compatibility, and the physical compatibility. Now, many people come in and they're like, I am physically attracted to this person. Yes, that you are physically attracted to this person does not mean that every other thing has to align. So these are the signs that when you notice, you know that intelligibility has when there is an unclear future, when their goals are not set. Somebody wants to live abroad and the other person is comfortable in his village. By the time plans come in or the, man, the person that wants to go abroad is ready to go abroad. The other one says, I am okay where I, I am. And before you know it, trouble, you know, it's, you're creating more and more and more problems for yourself. So for them, for partners to be compatible, they should ensure even before they start making preparations, making preparations for, the for the wedding which is what we, we do most times we get the wedding planners we get the paparazzi we get we go you know take different pictures and go on air and social media to post pictures this topic is very very vital we must check how compatible we are with our partners before we start to run this race it is a forever race not one that will mm. come today and stop in a week or two weeks. and before you say i do before you say I do. Oh. okay the most i'm mean, actually you. you you went even further with the old thing but then the next question that i would have for you would be what determines compatibility in a couple but you you in a, you've said so much about it um a pharmacist you know but i just would want let me start with her I think it's important. Then I will I'll, I'll, we'll go to over to the pastor as well. You know, what determines compatibility in a couple? She said a lot though, a lot. but from your, hang, from your own angle, what would you have to say from there? Hmm. I'm going to hang it on um, a tripod. Okay. You no, know, when growing up, we know this tripod, normally those local women used to make food. Yes. Okay, well, I don't when even know. No I was saying yes, as yeah. though as if I'm it has a <laughs> just like a, a tripod. There. Okay, it has the normal stand. tripod. When one is not there, what happens? You become an imbalance. That's right. That means the foundation is shaking. Mm -hmm. So, what determine accountability in couple in any kind of relationship? I will tie it to three pillars. Okay. Basically, first and foremost, agreement. Agreement. Okay. They say they can two work together. Unless they agree. Awesome. I can't work with you mm -hmm. if we are There's not agreeing. So there must be an agreement. Hmm. Can we should we do this? Yes. Should we not? Okay. There must be an agreement between the intended couples or marriage partners. Agreement is one. Okay. And um that can actually lead to a lot of crisis in the home when there is no agreement. That one is one. The second pillar we look at it to be possibly adaptability mm -hmm. you know sometimes life happens yes and life will do happen yes even in marital relationship that's the truth so it, it's possible that maybe when i said i do to you mm -hmm. <laughs> what i saw physically or possibly what i saw financially 
mm -hmm. is what I actually intended for myself. Mm -hmm. Maybe along the line, life happens. God forbid we don't we didn't we don't plan for something bad to happen. To happen. But life happens and uh, this pretty lady that I've married mm -hmm. got involved in an accident and this God pretty forbid. face is no longer there again. Mm. What happens? Mm. So that word called adaptability is what many pair couples don't want to even hear. I married a wealthy man. Now you are poor. Please, I can't cope. Okay. I have to go back to my parents' <laughs> home. I, 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 can't, I didn't come to this world to suffer. Yeah. I have to go. Mm. Mm. I married you to be this. Now, now you are this. So you just have to adapt to life that we do have. Because whether we like it or not, life will happen to us. So true. In this journey called mm. marriage. So sometimes we plan like what pharmacist just said. Mm -hmm. We just plan for that particular day celebration. The paparazzi, mm -hmm. the food, the this, the that. Forgetting that that day we come and go. Yes. And we are going to face the reality okay. of what it means to be married. That's right. So when life when life happens, will you adapt? So these are certain questions that intended couples to ask themselves. Beautiful. What would be the worst thing that will happen that will make you to want to leave? Hmm. Hmm. If your father-in-law should come and maybe do something to you, will you leave me? If my in-laws should come and do, oh, come, no, all these questions to we, we don't think them to be yes. very important. We don't discuss them. Hmm. Majorly, majority, 99% of intended couples don't go deep. Hmm. Francis was saying alignment of values, alignment of goals, goals. alignment of lifestyles, yes. alignment of personalities, alignment of dreams. So all of these are things we should look into before saying, I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing. And I'm saying I do. So I just talk about agreement, adaptability, and most importantly, achievement. Mm -hmm. Achievement is key because that means I can feel the inner world of my partner. I want to go in depth to so know what your feelings mm -hmm. are, what your desires are, mm -hmm. what your needs are, what your wants are. As in, I am sensitive to what you are feeling, feeling at that particular, at that particular time. time. Most couples don't want to listen mm. and in this part of the world worry nigeria mm -hmm. you no know, in this worry that we are in now yes. mama let's come to okay let's come to you know i don't know basically from the men's angle okay they don't want to be very sensitive to what the woman is feeling, feeling. Mm. i don't know if it is cultural <laughs> background i don't know if it is a um, men's ego, ego. Mm -hmm. i don't know if it is i don't know what to put it okay. but being sensitive to your partner's feelings, feelings. Mm -hmm. wants, desires is one better way mm -hmm. to have achievement in marriage. Exactly. So if there is no agreement, there is no adaptability, we don't want to f feel each other's exactly. feelings and everything. Because exactly. even if I'm not communicating to you, everything about me should be telling you something. something. That means you are in my inner world. Uh -huh. So if I call you someone I want to get married to, yes. And we have been courting for some time. Mm -hmm. We should know my inner world. How, how so I if I've feel. Been so we shouldn't be selfish at all. I think that's that's the point you are trying yes, to make. Coming, yes, you shouldn't be selfish Let's or self-centered. At all, you know. So okay, I am doing this necessarily. Me won't want to do this, mm -hmm. but because I know you need it so or you want I, it, so then I go out of my I way. I have to go out of my way just to make do. it happen for you. For you. This time, now it's not just about it's me. me. It's about how can I make my partner. Happy. Happy. Awesome. All of this brings peaceful coexistence. coexistence. But no, no, no. It must be my way. way. I said this. This is how it must be really done. done. You can't go any other way. You must not do it in any other way. It must be, ah, there will be trouble in the house. So true. So there will be trouble in the house. Mm. That's, that's incredible. Key. Okay, well, I've already set our pastor up. I mean, she, she's made a lot of points out there. I wouldn't know what your contribution will be, uh, Pastor. What would you have to say concerning this? She said a lot already. No, she said a lot. She said a lot. She said a lot already. But I would like to also say that many times we we mistake compatibility for chemistry. So it's, a, it's one it's one reason why many people get get it all twisted. I think we need to really define the dimensions of this compatibility we're talking about. Because if I like the way he smells, or I like the way she smells, or I like the way she talks, or the, I like the, the way she laughs at my jokes, many pe people see 
those surface um, chemistry as a way of compatibility. But it is different from that. Compatibility, uh, it has to do ma with major core values, with major core values about a person, with major core values about your, yourself. Many times, the reason why people can't figure out if they are compatible with a partner or not is because they themselves don't know who they are. Many people don't know what their goals are, their objectives are, what, they, what kind of marriage they would like to build, what kind of marriage they would like to have. So how will you now look out for these components in the other person? When you don't even know the direction that your life is going, you don't know what visions you have. Many people don't even know their, you know, what 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 things what things are negotiable and what things are non-negotiables. They don't know their ne negotiables are non-negotiables. So for those okay. kind, I, those kind of people. a young lady once came for counseling and she said. Mom, I don't know what is really wrong here. My husband can be intimate with everyone else but me. He can joke, play with others. But when it has to do with me, it's a no-no. I don't understand. <laughs> well, if you were to be in my... Did you get a question? The young yes, lady, a young lady, a young lady stopped by my office and asked this question. My husband can be very intimate with everyone else but me. Why? So what would be your well, answer to that? That, that? That's a, a very important, it's a very important problem, if, if I might say. It's a very important problem. Because important problem? Oh my God! Okay, I'm very much interested to hear. I am, I, am, I am very certain for a fact that when they were courting or during this man's behavior, you know, he doesn't call her and she says to herself, oh, uh, he's not the calling type, he's not the texting type, he's not the joking type. Not the and we all type. have a way of giving excuses. We all have a way of giving excuses. He must, she must have been put, putting up you know backing him up with defenses in her head she might not have been saying it vocally though but in her head she, she must have been you know defending him properly because she wants the marriage but now she gets into the marriage and realizes that the husband is not actually the calling that he doesn't like to call doesn't this case it, 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 it calls it calls other people but her but you see the, the issue the issue here is Okay, it's not as if it, it doesn't interact with everyone else. But the challenge here is that he doesn't have any relationship with, well, the, with the woman in his life. He's not attracted to her. He's not that attracted to her. He, he, he may not be that interested from the beginning, but she didn't see that. Yeah, and the husband. Hmm. Let me come in. All right, then. Okay, f before the pharmacy will come, we're actually out of time here for this. Um, when we're back, it is actually to look deeper into this because, you know, if two people, if you aren't married yet, it's a different thing. A different thing. But if you are now married and it do? looks as though as if the man would rather spend more time with other people than you or would be very free with other people than you or would be very intimate with other people than you evidently something has to be wrong so what is wrong and how do we fix it on mama heading and you don't touch the dial back in a moment
name is Mr. Israel Omwaka Oyedu, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Mrs. Bandi Oluafumilayo Oyedu. And we are here on the Family's Corner segment. We are here to answer 10 questions. 10 questions. And let's see who's going to be the winner. I'm the winner. Babes, I'm going to win you I'm today. I'm the winner. Let's see about that. So the first question, name of your husband's male best friend. Hmm. <laughs> I already know this answer. His name is Terry Sin Osas. Very correct. Genoa. Very correct. Yay! High five. <laughs> Wives hot beans. Wives hot beans. I think your hobby is, oh I know your hobby is listening to music mm -hmm. and movies. Did I get that? No. Mm. But you still try to be music. Okay, cooking. What about cooking? Okay, favorite topic of discussion. Okay. Presently, oh, you like discussing about your job? You like discussing about your job? Hmm? Yes, you got that, but not that's not really correct. I like discussing about my family, so it's a nay for me. It's a nay. Alright. Signature look. My wife's signature look is corporate. She likes to be on corporate. Mm -hmm. Mostly on casual too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the favorite artist. The favorite gospel artist is um. The I don't. What? Yeah. Um, Justin Oweku. I don't. Maybe I don't, don't know. Don't sing Oweku. Okay, don't. That's the word you're trying to. Yeah, that's yes, what I'm trying yes, to. Yes, you got that. You got that. <laughs> High five, high five. You tried, you tried. Your wife's favorite dish. Ah, I think I know this. Okay. Vegetable soup and a pounded yam. I got it. Okay. Yeah, really got. <laughs> Best emotional moment of years. Okay, when we had our baby. My husband actually cried. Everybody knows that. In my house. Yes, that's correct. Another high five. All right. Doing well. Though. Favorite topic discussion. Favorite topic discussion. It's our family. She likes to talk about our family a lot. Mm -hmm. And our child. Mm -hmm. Okay. And our business. Also, we like money now. Just what? I get that. Try. You did well. Husband's hobbies. Okay. My husband likes play, loves playing football and loves watching football. Yeah, very, very correct. That's my guy. <laughs> That's me. Favorite television station. Favorite television station. That would be Tele Lenovelas. Tele Movies. Yeah, Tele And I always say, don't watch that. Don't watch it. In the house, okay. inside the house. Indeed. You get all the best thing. I don't be the guy. The boss announced the results. I want you now, guy. Okay. I think I want you. I want you. And, um, you, you I oh, you. But, the, seriously. The wife won. I need a rematch. What was that? In I need a rematch. <laughs> Thank you, Mama, for having us on the show today. Keep watching Mama Ellen and you on African, African Broadcasting, Broadcasting Network. Network. Thank you, and see you some other time. Catch you. Peace.
Now, welcome back. This is Steve Mama Helen and you all the way from Wari, Nigeria today. So, did you enjoy that family corner? That was incredible. Husband and wife, you guys are good, job. Huh? And then, of course, what, what am I going to say? Women have more observant, right? They pay more attention to details. Uh, that's just who we are. That's how we're wired. So, congratulations to both of you because who, it doesn't matter who wins here. Your husband and wife. This is you both of you actually winning this game and so congratulations to you now if you're just joining us uh, we're actually looking at the word compatibility in relationships and we want to see how husband and wife or those who are about to or intended to uh, can pick something out of today's show and see how they can then make things more compatible uh between them at the end of the day and we've had wonderful wonderful nuggets from the from our guests both the virtual and then of course the in house guests on today's mama helen and you now the, the the aspect of intimacy was what we were actually dwelling on and um i think i i um posted a question that a young lady uh came into my office to ask me saying why is it that my husband seems to be more intimate with everyone else but me and then i think um one of one of our guests picked that up and was going to do it okay i think it's the pharmacist now uh, before we went on break please go ahead with the with your mind over this okay thank you mama if this lady is to walk up to me, the first question I will ask her is, what does it mean to you? If you ask many people, why did you marry? What you'll get is, I was of age. I graduated from school. But marriage is truly a gift, a commitment, and a destiny. So my advice to the people who are that's intending couples who are ready to get married is, be naked and ashamed. What does this mean? Mm. Open-minded. This lady obviously oh, has a love language, love language and the man is not meeting her love language. Sister Eloha made some a, a remark when she talked about the African man because we are here. How are they raised? They are raised to show no emotion, to be hard. Don't cry, my man. Some of them do. Don't, don't let her know. She, don't let her know. Yeah, you, know you, you love her. <laughs> you're, you're not becoming a, a woman now. Show your masculinity. Don't cry. Don't show your emotion. Now they say I'm in love. Beyond love, we need life skills and emotional skills to make a healthy marriage happen. Who teaches us yeah. emotional and life skills? We must learn. If I have a baby. And I'm sweeping, cleaning, doing everything in the house without help from my husband. Of course, there's going to be imbalance. I'll be tired. I'll be weak. How do I serve him? So we must create balance to have a healthy marriage. Naked and not ashamed. Communication is another big factor. Has she opened up to the husband to tell the husband, this is my love language. This is how I want to be loved. I see you smile That's and play right. with people outside. I want you to do same to me. And again, is she respectable? Is she, is she open? That's because right. Because most of us just complain <clears throat> when we go out and we don't say these things to the men. I am not That's ashamed right. that I, I have to tell my husband or teach my husband how to love me. He buys me gifts. I'm not a gift person. But then words of affirmation make me. And then if he comes from a home where they were not raised to, you know, share affection or openly show affection, then there's no crime in showing him that, honey, if you do this with me, this is how I will feel. Yes. So there's yes. need so there's for us to be naked and not ashamed. There's need naked for us to be emotional and not ashamed. Without emotions, we can't live, we can't live. We are not trees. So, dear man, show your wife some emotion. Dear woman, kindly, kindly push him, nudge him. And we have women power. Our feminine essence is glow and flow. 
We know how to do these things. Yeah. Employ it <laughs> and then bring your man back home. <laughs> I love that. That is awesome. That is okay. Well, now let's let's get something hard from the from the man here, uh, the only man in this in this show. What does he have to say concerning that? Well, uh, you've had what some of our our guests have said. The women now about the, the deficiency that is quite notable in our men. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, I think that without being um, defensive of the male gender, I think and I believe that um, both speakers have spoken really well and they're absolutely correct, okay? Absolutely correct. But then again, many women don't know how to create and sustain an atmosphere of fun in the home. For instance, you, you know your husband loves I, I love to talk when there are certain topics that are No, it's not like he doesn't uh, communicate, he does. But many times, if he's a football lover and he's watching football alone in the house, you don't know who Ronaldo is, you don't know who Messi is, Messi you don't know the <laughs> you don't know, you don't know how you are, you are just in limbo about the whole thing. You have no clue who is playing, you have no clue what, what, what football club he supports, and he will just be sitting there wa watching the, 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 the football game like a zombie. Meanwhile, you, 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 are, you cannot contribute. So how do you want to touch your husband to set up an atmosphere of fun and interaction in the home when the wife is not... Um, uh, the wife should also try and uh, initiate some of these conversations. If he talks to people outside and he doesn't have that much flair and fun with you, find out what kind of communication or conversation that he engages in with other people that are not happening in your home. If it is the issue of Arsenal and Ronaldo and Okocha, he talks about it and he laughs with other people. You too, go and do some re research about Ronaldo and Okocha. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Orlando and Ococha. Oh my God! Well, well, that, that's that's a very good point there. But can complex also be a factor here? Can complex also be a factor? Because if the man would prefer to dialogue with people who he sees are quite, you know, lower in in terms of um, achievements or what have you, to the wife, yeah. yes, and so on, and then he feels that okay, well. He, he feels very compatible. I mean, those people, they, they are within is, you know, sometimes it could be a mental, you know, challenge. It could, it could be, it could be, it could be emotional. It could be a background. It could make, it could be many factors as well. And like I said, complex. Okay. So how yes. do you, yes. how do you, how do you address that? For example, I think I think if, if 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 I'm allowed, I think that both partners. One of the most important keys to a successful marriage is that both partners may not actually or necessarily be similar, but they should take an interest in the things that their partners are interested in. Very important. It doesn't mean that you have to, to, to be a crazy Arsenal fan as well, or a crazy football fan or basketball fan, but take some certain level of interest. Take an interest. For instance, in the in the, the issue of, 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 of complex, I know many husbands that don't really talk a lot in the home because what they are interested in, they, they, the focus of their conversation are more of uh, how many lands are we buying? How many acres of land are we buying? They are talking property, talking property, 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 property. property. So when you see them having conversations outside, it is property, property, property. How many lands are we buying? What what, what house is available? What area of Lagos is selling? But then, the wife who is not also a property, property person does not take an interest in actually knowing what is C of O. The wife does not know. What is uh, a return on investment? The wife does not know. What is a mortgage? The wife does not so can such a husband maintain communication or, or uh, interesting conversations? You are, you are more or less talking about intellectual capability. 
that is that is the intellectual capability isn't it that's what you're trying to say yes, yes, so yes, uh, uh, so yes. then it, sh it shouldn't only just be for the woman alone even the parties. yes for both parties for it is important parties. for them to to be at the same wavelength Level. so yeah so that they can yes. easily yes. you know um yes show interest and all that and then of course even if you think that oh maybe somebody is this or that or that the fact that you're married you know should you, create you some level of interest down. you know between both of you that level. you can even try at least start some from somewhere you know yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes yes yeah. start from somewhere rather than spending more time with other people maybe mates at home you know or anyone else you know who, who cares to listen and you you who reel out all your you life you yes you you, you reel out all your Mama, life to them times, okay. times, if i might add yes if i might add just very quickly many times like um well, one of the speakers said it also boils down to to family background as well many times the husband have never seen his mom or his parents having a conversation before and he got married at 48 from year one to 40 years he has never seen his mother and father sharing a meal on the same table he has never seen the mom pecking the the the, the, the father or the the father holding the mom so all of this this is also affect so him it is not like he doesn't want to talk it is not like he wants initiate conversations in the home but he has grown up with this mindset or mentality that if you talk or gist with your wife too much she will become in submissive or disrespectful or she would she would she she she, she would not see you as a man many men have been conditioned from childhood and from their upbringing to see themselves as lord and i'm talking to both gen, uh, uh, gen, genders now many men believe that if you share a meal if you sit down with your wife on the same table to have breakfast lunch or dinner that it means that you are not the lord over your home so the men eat separately like a king and the wife eat separately on her own like so a such a man from such dysfunction will never want to see even though it is not in him to not have uh, uh share any form of, of conversation or spice things up in his home but mentally emotionally and psychologically he is very disconnected from all of that he doesn't see that as the normal he sees being the lord in his home as the non the, the normal and many wives also have such perspectives as well so we should balance up family upbringing family background with uh, uh, what your your spouse is thinking now what are the perspectives that you 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 are about to marry a man what are the perspectives that he holds concerning marriage, concerning submission, concerning visiting visiting parents, visiting con parents. concerning Can people who come from it? All of those things are very important. Family background, family background. I mean, oh my God! I think you really went deeper. You know, I mean, as a matter of fact, both of you have done very marvelously well. And then, but let, can we look at this? Okay, so these two people are married, so it isn't as, as if they're not married. But then they are beginning to notice, you know, incompa incompatibility uh, between both of them. How? What would you say to them? Because now they're married. You know, if it's, if you're just trying to choose, is a different thing entirely. You can either say, okay, so we're not compatible, so I can take a walk. But in this case, they are married. So what do you do? Let me start with her. <laughs> hmm. First and foremost, thing, this lady she don't just, just go out and um, seek counsel outside. The first thing she should do is communicate with the husband. Okay. C can we try to get your volume up a so, little? Effective communication is key in every marriage. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about communication, not just you, just talking only. Listening also is very key. So mm -hmm. I have a very deep one on one talk with your spouse. Honey, what's happening? Over time, I've noticed this and this and this from you towards me. Is anything the matter that I need to know? Is it me that have the issue or is there is something that you just need to let me know? I noticed that in most marriages, yes. effective communication between spouses is actually becoming the thing of the past. Hardly that you see husband mm. and wife sit down on round table discussion. Mm. Let's tackle this. Tackle this. I'm hot here. Let's talk. Why? 
let's talk about it. How do we get out of it? Hmm. So that lady should calm down, sit her husband down at the appropriate time. Yes. Because one thing is, let's talk. And, and that thing is, I'm shouting at you. You don't do this to me all the time. I want you to be doing this. Yeah. You play with other ladies. That is complaining. You're not yeah. talking. You're not talking. So I'm not saying complain to your husband. I said, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, conversation with your husband on the matter at stake. And for me, personally, I've been married for over 20 years. When such things are happening in my home and I'm not comfortable again, you should know because everything about me be saying it to you that I'm not happy. <laughs> so the best time is when the man is very happy. It's the best time to throw such questions at him. Please, mm -hmm. sir, can we talk? Let's talk. Can Let's we talk. talk? This is it. Please speak out. What can I do to make it better? Or what can we do to make it better? I need you more. I, this is what I like. A, a pharmacist was saying something about love languages. How many of us know love languages? Most persons don't even know it. Some, it sounds strange to some persons. It's only when you are deep into personal development, wanting to make yourself a better person, person. that you know all of that. All things. So love languages, there are very many of them. There are very many of them. Do you know your spouse's love lang language? You husband, do you know your wife's love language? Mm -hmm. You wives, do you know your husband's love, love language? language? Well, most times, we tend to communicate uh, our own personal love language to our spouses. Mm -hmm. So, let me say, I am the wife, you are the husband. Mm -hmm. So, I want to communicate to you the way I want to be loved. Mm -hmm. Which sometimes does not go well. So, possibly I love receiving gifts. Mm -hmm as my love language so i want to communicate to you my own personal love language because mm -hmm. that is on that way for you to know your spouse's love language mm -hmm. they communicate it to you mm -hmm. without you knowing exactly my husband love gifts mm -hmm. he give it to me more a pharmacist was saying we have a lot of things in common pharmacist he was saying i'm not the gift type go and buy me the best car <laughs> i will tell you thank you but you know what i need you more can't just hold my hand i like physical touch yes hold my hand let's talk Let, let's let's let me play together you. My God, that will do me more good. I will enjoy it more than you going to buy me the most expensive car or the buy me the most expensive house. house. But some ladies love the gift. Mm -hmm. Did you see it? Yeah. So that is where. So you sit down and communicate. All That's of this. already in the marriage. Mm -hmm. We're already in the marriage. Let's make it work. Okay. Because divorce is not an option. Again. She has just said it. You are, we're, you're already in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Let's make it work. One is one is to give. Well, how do we make it work then, pastor or? A uh, pharmacist, would, would you want to interject okay. somewhere okay. there? Yeah. Um, I'll mention three things. First of all, it's smiling. Don't worry, I'm not coming with my bad news. I'll mention three <laughs> things. And one is, we are already in the marriage. What do we do? Set your differences. Celebrate. Mama said at the beginning that no two people are alike. We are different. So celebrate your differences. And so that's bringing your strength and bringing your weakness. There's a reason why There's God brought people why. together. So where I am strong, the other person is weak. We complement each other. Yeah. Another thing I would like to say, work on your expectations. We all have expectations. And sometimes the crux of the matter is the unmetation. Because I have this my expectation too that my husband is going to be with me two seven. my husband is going to do this my husband is the king my husband is so oh, calm down make your expectation realistic and when they are realistic it's easy for the other man who is not perfect to meet up with what to is lastly i would say after the communication like my sister has pointed out then the unmetness and then you celebrate your differences. I say, find a common. So, Miss Com, Miss B Com, and they find a common ground. And that common ground is what is worse. Some people like to have dinners outside, and oh, maybe they set a date for having dinners with their partners. Then, some women who love to cook, who want to cook at home, create a burn up your home cake. It's not every time you also go out for dinner, maybe because you want to save. That's another area all entirely because if you look at the family background, how was I raised? I was raised in a home where, where we didn't spend too much and now I'm married to a man who wants to spend and lavish money anyhow. All of those 
different, we must celebrate them. We must come together and find a common ground. And that takes me to the issue of family vision. Family vision. And I come from a background that is different from the background my husband comes from. But then we are going to start a family. To start a family, let us create our vision, a vision different from the backgrounds we are coming from. It is this family vision that is going to drive where we are going to and the children that we bring in to the world. So family vision would help a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, fantastic. fantastic. Thank you so very much indeed. Pastor, would you like to, and you know, I had to what she has said, or both of them have? <laughs> Yes, I'll just say, I'll just uh, drop a word in a minute. Um, I I wouldn't want to believe that they, they share no similarities. I wouldn't want, want to believe that they share no no vision or goals in, in common. I wouldn't want to believe that. Many times when we are focused on the things that are making us incompatible, we take our focus away from the things that are actually we, we actually sh share in common. Okay. If we say we don't like the same kind of movies or we don't like the same kind of, of, of songs or, or things, but there are other areas as well that we share the same strength. There are other areas that we share the same energy level. So in addition to what the, the, our speakers have said, fantastic. I would say that if you are having, if you, if you are noticing a little bit of incompatibility in different areas here and there in your marriage, the, the both of you should sit down and figure out those areas of strength, those areas that you both share the same vision and, and, and perspectives on, and then cultivate those areas the more. Don't focus because of the areas that the both of you, it is a duo. It, it is, it is. You, you are both married now, and it is for a lifetime. Divorce is not an option. So the both of you can do is to make good use of the areas that you are strongest on. The areas that you are strongest on. So don't focus on all of those areas that she is not good in this, he is not good in that. You will keep complaining until your children turn 35. No, focus on those areas <laughs> where, okay, <laughs> you are good here, okay, you are better than me here. You are much, you can handle this better. You handle finances better. You handle uh, communication better. You plan the dates better. You plan, so have, focus hey, on you, those you, areas you where you mm -hmm. are struggling. So, you know, I, this is really, really good, That's and true. I'm sure. What do you think out there uh, for for our viewers uh, watching? What would be your contribution to this? It's extremely important. Now, get, let's get into the next question. Are separate interests to be expected in relationship? How do you handle the issue of separate interests in relationship? All right, let's start with the pharmacist. Are separate interests expected in the family, in a relationship, as it were? Yes, Mama. The two people coming together come from two different backgrounds. They were not raised together, even if they were raised on the same streets, even if they were raised in the same compound. But we are talking about two different families, two different, that's, we talk about nature and nurture. Two people come together. Let's look at it. Even if they worship in the same church, church could be termed religion, but their level of spirituality may differ. How they see God differ. From what perspective? Their trust in God, their faith in God. Money and spending, another area that is very key in marriage. How do you see money? What does money mean to you? How do you spend? Cleanliness and orderliness. Sometimes you come in and make a man who so, so neat, so neat that you may think he has a problem, you know, not wanting to see dress. Sex and intimacy, which is the engine room of every marriage. So men believe that they should have sex every day. While some women think that sex is only for procreation. Timeliness and punctuality. We've seen men who dress up on Sundays and they're in their cars waiting for 20, 30 minutes before their wives will come out to join them. To join them. Very common. Who doesn't like people? 
What about priorities? We go on and on and on. So all of this just tells us that the man can be different and the woman can be different. But they must find a mutual connection. Our differences don't make us stay apart. <clears throat> Our differences actually draw us together. 24 years in marriage with my husband, I am beginning to accept the things that, you know, we, sh we share in common and the things we don't share in common. Because I see that these differences draw us. So be separate, have different vision, have different purpose. But then that common ground I talked about, come, find a common ground. Is it in spirituality? Is it in finance? Like the pastor said, if the woman is good, to be you, be, allow your spouse to be who they are, yeah. right? They That's are. what you are just who the they are, are and are certain. Be you, be you. I love that. I like, I like the word be you and do you. Okay, well, this question because I don't want to keep dancing around this. We're really, really out of time now. But there is this particular question that I would really want the three of you to give your own answer to and it is do you think astrology which is fortune telling or numerology affects relationship compatibility in africa for example you know uh, uh, a lot happens <laughs> this one says i've gone to be fair <laughs> you know and then the next thing you hear is that your wife wants to kill you he wants to go the house or the the wife the husband wants to do this you know all sorts of things creating unnecessary tension and or something that does not even exist what do you have to let me start with you what do you have we to are, say concerning that we are africans and um and well, it's so we, sad that even christians from, are, are, are almost everything that we're affected doing is by mystical. this what everything that we are doing is mystical i I can't remember precisely the name of the village where if a young person wants to marry, mm -hmm. the women from the particular community, mm. it will be asked to go. I don't know if it is uh, the name they call it. Let, let's go and check and find that if this man that you want to get married to is your actually the one that God has destined for you to get married to. Yes. So they will go and do their so called oracle, uh, uh -huh, oracle, Consult oracle. To, con to confirm. I said, no, 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 this one that is coming. When you get married to him or uh -huh. when some sort of time you will just die or she will die or something or you will not have to drive <laughs> or something will happen so you can't get married to this kind of person so um african believes african believes and do you know what, even in this that's, that even in this confusion. even in this Modern advanced day. technology it is still happening unfortunately there are some families that will say before you marry mm -hmm. that man that you want to marry the right, yes, wife that you want yes. to marry you must bring them home we must do some rituals we must do this to know how far the marriage is going to work or not you know but uh, uh, they said the it's about, of the, so there's of obviously God's affecting compat uh, compatibility in homes what yes. do you have to say before i get to the pastor because he's a man of god here let's hear him last pharmacist what do you have to say concerning <laughs> Mama, oh. I love that that we are we are africans but then my perspective i don't believe in all of that i like to use the football formation to teach marriage you get into the football field and then your formation is 442 if i'm right my football bro my football brothers and then you get in and then your opponent starts they may have a stronger defense they may come with yeah. a formula that you know you get into the field and you get confused so you go back to your drawing board and then you change your formation from 442 to another formation now that you know their defense style so what am i saying no matter how prepared you are for marriage no matter whatever you see so or you are seeing when you get in there in my pigeon english you will still see what's in your eye no one see and so what prepare but when you get in there Please, beyond love and whatever they see or they don't see, you still need life skills, emotional skills, and still your relationship with God to keep that marriage working. We do depend awesome. on astrology. Awesome. Every time you have a problem and then run back to the fortune teller to tell you you should do this and do that. No. Again, marriage is a gift. Marriage is commitment and marriage is a destiny. Let us stick 
and work at it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Our families, you've done very well. What about you, Pastor? What do you have to say concerning this? So, I mean, because you now see even believers, you know, still going outside to consult all sorts of nonsense i mean to, to to help you with 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 the answer you're going to give you know because i mean with the with with um with the line of profession we've chosen you see all sorts of things people come to you and they tell you all sorts you know a couple actually came to see me husband and wife and then the question is ma we're having a serious problem everything was going very well in our home we were working together as a family and we were doing marvelously well all of a sudden someone shows up and says ah now that the man is now well settled everything is now okay when he doesn't have anything there was no problem but when he now has everything and everything seems to be going very well you know for him the wife now wants to kill him so that he can inherit his property his property and that was the beginning of the problem of the house now the wife says how on earth this is the time that i want to enjoy my husband this is the time that we're supposed to be having relaxation and be thanking god for what god has blessed us with why would i want my husband out of the picture but this man seems to believe it because it's coming from people who are very close to him pastor why how do we silence the voice of uh, the astrologers or the uh how, how do you call them now <laughs> fortune tellers, fortune tellers. My, say the my of God's will bring it light I honestly does mama honestly i don't know where to start on this particular topic because should we talk about the fact that even believers are not going outside you said they are going outside to to get a word of um, knowledge and uh and forecast concerning their marriages there are many believers who don't even go outside they come inside what will you say about a lady who takes the names of five brothers to a pastor to decide who the real husband is is that lady not mistaking the pastor for a fortune teller yeah that's a bad one that's a bad one you see that you see that so many yeah. even, even among believers we are mistaking our spiritual head our spiritual fathers as fortune tellers yeah. fortune yeah. tellers as well but, yeah the yeah. funny thing yeah. is what the, the the secret about this mama is that when you go to an iroko tree to dance around an iroko tree in an effort to get married when you get into the marriage the the, the marriage one the of the requirements of, of keeping the marriage, of the marriage, the marriage is that you will have to go you know. back to that iroko tree so so true. Right, that keeps dancing that's true so that's true, true. That that so true. Is true. what is happening in the african culture so if a pastor or and a fortune teller or you know what some all of these prophets from the, both the good side and the, the bad side, side and the bad side and yes there's some prophets as well yeah. a lot of prophets have scattered homes mm -hmm. exactly exactly what i'm saying yeah. so even believers some be, be, believers are more comfortable uh, consulting from the inside i mean taking names of 10 sisters five sisters to a man of god to help them decide <laughs> who to marry and who is the best person to marry such a marriage can never be free because when so there are true. issues on every step of the way you will have to keep going back to that imam to help you um, manage your, your marriage. marriage you will keep you have to go back to that imam to help that told you that this uh, xyz is your husband is your you husband. keep mm -hmm. you have to go there to get convictions and confirmations that you are doing the right thing so it's a matter of uh, it we, we shouldn't just start what we cannot finish and fortune telling does not decide anything at all what one of the but things it is I even wrong is, spiritually yes it is wrong it is, it is wrong it is isn't it it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong, wrong. It's wrong. wrong. And, you know this, wait, this is my for, for example what, what was my reply to that i mean I, I i told the couple i said number one you know i mean you you have opened the door, the door for, for an, an intruder 
into your home and that's, that's why you're having these serious true. heats right now and the best way to handle it is to kick the intruder, intruder out, out and yes, go on your knees out. before the law so that you can re, yes, you know re-engine your home and keep it aflame yes, again yes, the first thing then the yes, second yes, thing yes, is yes, hey if you for example okay maybe you're single and then you're looking for someone you're going to be compatible with go on your knees and talk to god you know james and andrew are coming they, they are, they are, yes they are showing interest okay apart from the fact that you have taken out time to, to really understand who they are and that comes through yeah. engagement yeah. talking yeah. finding how yeah. is temperament her temperament yeah. all the things yeah. that you need to look at your checklist and after you have done that then go on your knees father is this the right man for me or is this the right you woman for me permission. that is very you important and where you have peace that's you where it lies in. because i still remember yes. you know and this is yes. not to say that you're not going to have problem later on you know as time goes on because everything good in life will be challenged that's true you know everything yes. good in life will you be challenged pressure. Yes, you will face it. But at least you know that God said this. For example, I mean, I, the way I got married, the way I found my husband is, is still something that even sometimes in a family we all laugh about. Okay? And it was during the Yuletai time. Um, you know, I, with my, I, you know I, ha, I was living in Lagos. I had come back from the UK then. I was living in Lagos. And then with my office, you know, we, there was this holiday time. But I've always been a very workaholic person. I went to the office, you know, to try and tidy up some things with, with my manager, then in, in the office. And whilst we were walking, a friend of mine gave me a call and said, Oh, there is a pastor in town. I know you like prayer. <laughs> Would it be nice for you? Would you want to come along and all that? You know? So I said, oh, yeah, that would be terrific. That would be beautiful. Yes. Ah, it, it, prayer is never too much, you know? And at the end of the day, to cut the long story short, okay, um, when they came for me, I, I had gone upstairs because I, my office there was on a, at a court, you know, on Ujola uh, Yemistri, you know, a court, Ozumba. It's the Ozumba of the way, no, whatever, a court anyway. So my office was there and <laughs> um, I had gone upstairs because I couldn't get the job done. So when they came to ask after me, and the young man forgot to tell them or to say please wait because i had said once they show up kindly rush upstairs and get me but she he forgot so when they came they left like that without um having to get my attention call for my attention and when i came down and i said what happened so mom i'm so uh, madam then i am so sorry you know they came and i forgot about telling them that you were upstairs and so on the bottom line is Okay, I was confused. Marrying a pastor or marrying a banker, marrying a businessman or whatever. You know, th that confusion was was right there bugging because, of course, later on we got to see because they came back to pick me up, and then we met, and then when my husband now was praying for all of us, I'm trying to call the story short so that somebody can get blessed by this. When he was praying. The Lord, the Holy Spirit picked him up from where I was and positioned me by his side, by, by his side and said, that's your husband. And I was a little bit like, no, he cannot be. I never <laughs> prayed to marry a pastor. <laughs> you know, I mean, that was my conviction. And you know, I thought I said, no, 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 no. God, that cannot be true. Ah, <sighs> what the, is this the Holy Spirit talking? You know, I mean, it was, it was that much, you know, for me, you know, but then I remembered something. There was a young lady you know, God used me to convert. And she lives on the same eco court, you know, in Victoria Island. And she normally comes around, I know what, you know, when I'm in the office to see me and so on. So this particular day, she came to my office and then she said, oh, I was going to end up marrying a widower. I said, look at me again. Excuse me, marry a widow? Well, I mean, are you serious? I've never been married before. Why would God do that to me, to marry a widower? You know? So I, I mean, and I said, by the way, if God was going to speak to anyone, should it be me be, be the mm -hmm. one talking to you? You know, I've been in this faith before you, you know, but again, then I go to church. A young man walked out to me after service and said, you're going to be marrying someone that God is going to help. God is going to use you to help him fulfill his vision. Uh -uh. 
So, I mean, I was, I was getting that. And then, so the next thing I did was to put myself on a seven-day fast. Because then I now want to hear from God directly. God, what are you saying? Is this the man that you really want me to marry? Because he, he hasn't even said anything to me. But I was already getting all this. Okay? The seventh day, as I was handing the fast, my landline rang. When I picked the phone up, the next thing I had was, my name is Ayori Shijapo. Can I speak with <laughs> Helen? The rest is history. <laughs> oh my God. You know, today we're 25 years in marriage. So, I mean, pray about it. Talk to God about it. Even after he had asked my hand in marriage, I was still a little because, I mean, leaving London to, to stay in Lagos and then worry a place I've never been to. It was quite a confusion and then I mean, it would mean that I had to relocate. A lot of things would change. Friends, my friends, I, I was going to be losing. The, a lot of things was going to change for me. And I would never forget that day. You know, my driver didn't come on time. So I had to be the one to drive. And whilst in the, in the car trying to you know, navigate myself to the office, I heard a sound, solid voice. The way up is the way down. And then I asked God, why are you trying to get, what, what have I done that you are telling me the way up? What, are, is there anything the matter? So when I got to the office, and I, went, I just went flat on my face and I started crying to God. What would you want me to do? It was at that point when God, I heard God clearly, this is it for me. And I said, yes to your will. And I had super abundance peace, you know, concerning it. And that's the journey that has brought me to worry today. And perhaps maybe I won't be... We won't be on Mama Henny and you together today. Maybe it will be on a different note. So I've said all that to say that instead of consulting one, you know, astrologer, or, you know, or one thing or the other, talk to God about whoever that person is. If you don't have peace, walk away. If you don't have peace, walk away. But this is not to say that you would still not be challenged. But when you know that, there is God, God in this. In with you. No matter what, you're ready to weather through. You know the, the weather. So, please don't consult all this nonsense. They're not going to help you. And like don't Pastor said, worse. don't make pastors astrologers as well. You know, rather talk to God. Talk to God. There's nothing bad in you trying to rub minds with your pastors to say, well, I have these two people in mind and I'm not very yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, and a wise pastor would ask me, talk to me about them. Let me have a feel. You are the one who have been in this relationship. Let me have a feel and let, you know, talk, just talk to me about them so that I can categorically say, categorically say that maybe James will be better or Andrew will be better. Uh, that having to say, okay, do kalo kalo kind of, you know, where you, where you have, uh, you know, like the one that your hands ends with, that would be the man for you. And then later on, only for you to discover that you have made a terrible mistake. May God help her young ones in Jesus name. Okay. So with the last question, I was going to, I actually thought that was going to be the last one, but I think what we have even discussed has uh, pointed to this, but it would, it would be nice if we can answer this. So a marriage where there is no compatibility uh, with the couple, what is the way forward or your advice to them? I think that has been handled, but let's look at this. How do you find a partner with relationship compatibility how do you find a partner with relationship compatibility uh, let me start with the pastor uh mama thank you so much i think the first thing is about knowing who uh, who you are like i said earlier at the beginning of this session i said many times many people don't actually know who they are and what they want. so i it will be difficult for you to ascertain who you are compatible with if you don't know who, how you are compatible with yourself, so to speak. So what are your own goals? What are your own visions? What are your own likes and dislikes? What are your list of, of negotiables and non-negotiables? Okay, what what are your... your, your system? And then you go and marry a man who is saying, excuse me, you need to contribute to this table, <laughs> to this family post. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I interjected yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, it's, it's the first thing it has to be with you. I will teach that a prepared 
a single is an asset to any spouse a prepared single a prepared single Ooh. you are prepared you, are like, you, on your you, you are an asset to me because now me because when i'm coming I'm into, your life, into your life you already know who you are and what you want you are making it easier for easier both of us so we are not that's right to look at about our like and dislike you already know who you are you are already a prepared single so i'm coming to meet somebody prepared and if i don't match your your list of of of, of of you know uh preferences and qualities and values it is easier to just say no you are not the right one for me okay so the first thing is for you to prepare second thing is is that it is as as important as preparation is is also you being very intentional about making sure that there are no compromises many times we compromise a lot oh we compromise a lot he doesn't like to study the scripture and uh, maybe he will love to study the scripture later he's not a i need to i need to win him maybe. i need to he's not born again he smokes later he yeah he's probably going to change I, will, I'm, I, I am the unchangeable changer in her life i am the alpha and, and the omega <laughs> I will change my okay so I'm, many times compromises compromises you need you begin to compromise and those little compromises form the very and th i think i think what you have said is that the flag the, the red flag would always be there definitely so don't the ignore them the don't ignore them the yes don't the don't ignore them awesome well it's been wonderful now let me say this it's even going to get better because in a little while we're going to be entertaining some of uh you know the uh, viewers or should i say from the, from social media angle some of the questions and then what have you and then we'll be able to provide solutions to them our guests have been fantastic and they can only it can only get better if i may say oh my god a lady with a voice that is incredible by the name courage elijah is going to be blessing us you don't want to miss that and of course we'll be right back back in a moment so much mama helen for giving me this awesome opportunity to be able to sing to the world i am really grateful mom I read about you every time I hear your name I start to smile every time the Sun starts shining every time the wind starts blowing every time I hear your name I start to smile let me take this time to say I love you Let me take this time to say I care I love you, Lord I love you, Lord I love you, Lord I love you, Lord. 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 Let me take the sun to say I love. Let me 
take the stand to say I can't. How long you rely? How long you rely? How long you rely? How long you love? And I love you, Lord. How long you rely? Jesus, He is in love with me. I'm in love with Jesus, and He is in love with me. I'm in love with Jesus. He is in love with me. Oh, yes, I'm in love with Jesus. And he is in love with me. He's in love with me. He's in love with you. You gotta believe. He's in love with you. No matter what the devil say, he's in love with you. Believe it, brother. He's in love with you. He didn't die on the cross, sir, just to leave you. He's in love with you. No guilt, no shame. He's in love with you. He's in love with you. And that's why I know he's in love with me. Uh, he's in love with me. That's why I'm proud. He's in love with me. He's in love with me. He loves you and he loves me so much. Love. Jesus, he's in love. Love. Love with me. Now, welcome back to this thing, Mama Helen, and you're all the way from Wari, Nigeria today. Are you feeling me? And of course, are we feeling you out there? Because that's very important. That's the only reason why we actually call me your way. Compatibility is it possible in relationship, most especially in marriage. Okay. Uh, won't you say that that lady was fantastic? courage that was good baby well done well done well done well at this segment of today's program we're actually going to be looking at um some questions that came out from our social media handles and then of course if there are questions that you might need to send to us please don't hesitate to do so uh we'll def definitely push in um, answers to them as well but foremost is to look at our social media questions right now you know whilst we're trying to get that together hmm, a lot has been said today okay how did you meet your husband <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't be shy actually before i came here something happened i got a phone call from a friend of mine okay he's currently hospitalized due to hazard Mm. from my husband that, oh my god so while we were talking how did you meet your husband, husband. she was giving me at least i was giving her mine that mm. was shortly before i drove down here oh my god and this word compatibility ma is timely mm. and if what you are doing with mom and Haley and you mm. is what most persons are actually looking at mm -hmm. conflict in marriage will be minimized that's true. To a very large extent pastor was speaking and he said um you don't know yourself mm -hmm. and you are thinking of going into a relationship mm -hmm. a vital one come marry one, one you don't even understand yourself you don't know yourself you have not even mastered self 
you want to go into to another relationship, as in a relationship that have to do with understanding another person. Okay. So, me meeting my husband then, I was young. Okay. I was naive. <laughs> I was vulnerable. Oh. Sincerely. Okay. I actually don't know what marriage is all about. I've not been in a relationship before. That I have to say, okay, let's go into marriage, all of that. Okay. And uh, quite interestingly, this man I got married to actually saw me wearing pants. Oh my God. In the same neighborhood. Oh my God, you used so to be So from on... afar, he has been observing. Oh. And he's been saying to him, this lady. So when he came and said, it's going to be mine someday. I was like, not me and you. Okay. It can't happen. Oh. Marry, how, where? <laughs> You know, Pastor, please don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use the word I was young, I was vulnerable. I know I don't know self as in I don't even know who I am. You didn't you I don't know my life purpose. Young. I don't know what I want. But the only thing I know that I wanted then was I wanted education. Okay. Because I lost my mom when I was just ten. Oh due to assaults too. Mm. Wife battery. Oh my and um there was no father figure. So I have to, on my own, hmm. take care of me, take care of my little siblings, take care of my grandma. Oh my God. So that struggle from 10 years yeah. old till when I was done with secondary school, cool. I started working at age 16. 16. I started working. So when he came and said, I want to marry, marry who, how? Hmm, come here. I can't, I can't even think about it. Mm. I know you in this neighborhood and I know that women used to fight because of you in the street. So I can't even <laughs> get married to you in the first place. <laughs> I want, I'm trying to be real here. Yes. So I, and that I was what I really know. And I know that I don't want to go into such relationship that I have to do with women, fight. Because I need my peace. I want my peace. I don't want this. But what now happened? I needed to go to school. And I knew then that, I hope pharmacist is listening. I knew, I knew then that my 3,000 era. Ah, I knew that with my 3,000 era salary, can barely take care of me, my little siblings, my two siblings, and my grandma. Hmm. So, so when with the promise of I will of... send you to school, eh? Really? That was a trap. Oh my God. So I went in because of what I was, what I wanted. Ted. I wanted to go to school and it's giving me the promise of marriage. So I said yes. But thank God for what... Um, pharmacist said now what will make you succeed in your relationship is you developing life skills developing life skills having emotional skills and all of and that, all that yes. so i am an addict reader i'm addictive to reading and personal development right from that is my trial is when i'm when i'm sad and i want to tune up from the entire what is happening in my I'm world i go into books hmm. i will just start hmm. reading so hmm. that hmm. helped hmm. me a lot that helped me a lot I became very addictive to reading and started growing and becoming more and becoming more. And funny enough, he actually kept to his side of his bargain. It, was, he it, it, it is obvious. <laughs> so he actually sent me to school and today I'm a lecturer. You know? You know? And it worked out perfectly well. 20 years gone down the line. I've, I'm not saying it was rosy. We had challenges. We still have challenges to now, mm -hmm. but the but most, the, the, yes, <laughs> that is where that thing they call adaptability have to come in. And I, when I say these people like, it's a lie. Hmm. My husband is far older than me. So I look at him as a father figure. Apart from being my <laughs> husband, I look at him as a father figure, <laughs> you know, but then I can, I, I can understand what he wants, what I, what his interests are, uh, is, and I was able to like support him in his own interest. interest. He knows what my interests are. And he supported me in my in your own, own interest. interest. So that support, that support system could have actually had as a bridging gap, mm. bridge the gap between you and, and your, your spouse. spouse. So challenges, ah, they, they'll be there. Hmm. Issues, they will come Oh my up. God. I mean, so that was how it has been. And today we have, we are blessed with four kids. Four kids. Please, 20 years and can more, you give and her more, a we are still big it together. hand play this yes? is so this is a live experience this is a live so please experience. don't be thinking of because you're not we are saying we're not compatible my mother does not understand me i don't understand him i want it hard i want that but divorce is not an option you are in it you are in it make it work except when it is life threatening, threatening. when it is life threatening don't be thinking should i or should i not because i believe that 
if my mother has taken that option of working at at that time maybe today she would have still be alive her life okay. she was kicked when she was pregnant, pregnant. okay timely hmm. and the next day she went to live and she didn't come back alive hmm. she bleeded she, she, she said goodbye on. to the world wow, really so nice. when you know that you are in a very abusive marriage to the extent that your your uh, physical fast. health is challenged, challenged then your emotional health or mental health is challenged please don't keep quiet hmm. seek for help seek for help oh my god i well is it a trouble really really getting this woman to talk or has it helped somebody out there this is incredible thank you for you know for speaking from your heart i believe quite a number of people must have been blessed you know by that if i try getting you know our other guests to comment on this i'm sure we're never going to leave here today you know but maybe for <laughs> during the course of this uh, you know program uh they might find a way to inject or interject one or two things that could you know might be able to help in that area what but what i can take home from here from what she has said is you might not have been compatible or maybe you might not have had the reason a cogent reason for even marrying or perhaps the the reason might be faulty but the most important is, is that you can still make it work if you decide to to do so Definitely. and you know you decided that see, i want to make this work i might have i might have difficulty in this area because i was not groomed maybe my my co your cognizance was not even as developed uh to understanding what marriage is all about but yet we went through it and today so the rest young, is history. so naive so, so ignorant so what i learned in it you you did because you were willing to you were willing to that's awesome so kudos to you on Thank that you, and we really clap for you on that <laughs> we clap for it so we're having someone lillian from abuja and she says we're in kosher for two months and my fiance said we weren't compatible, but didn't say what my friends would have would be that this has hurt me a lot i miss him and was very attracted to him what should i do <laughs> he's no longer available Ooh, that's what he's walk. saying here ah okay it continues did it that's another one okay please go ahead what do you have to say concerning this pharmacist well well, Mama, like you said, he is no longer available. Do you want to beg oh, him? Do you want to go uh, after uh, him? Uh, the crowd has yes. Food, uh, milk. Then you continue to beg him for the rest of your life <laughs> to stay married. Pastor, something. Pastor mentioned something, and it was identity. Who are you? Have you sat down, even if? He doesn't tell you why he's walking away. Have you sat down within yourself to ask yourself a question? What is who am I? What do I want? What future do I see for myself? Because visualization works. I did that 24 years ago. I knew myself. I knew what I wanted. I knew the number of children I wanted. I wanted a future for myself. And yes. so that future I put to myself, the future I have, the future so that as the men came, I was able which one would fit into the plan I had for my life already. So what I would advise her to do is to work on herself. I love Eloha. I love Eloha. I am all books. I read a lot. I am all of development to grow myself as a woman. It's yes. a woman should be seen and not to be heard. I don't believe in that. I must be seen. In your bone must be heard. Feminine energy, my feminine power is not for trouble, it's to grow me. And so with a growth mindset, I read. Today I'm an author, and on April 30th, I'll be launching six of my books. Why? Why? Awesome. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Way to do it. So, in in, in a nutshell, what you're yes, in, in a nutshell, what you're saying is get a life, right? Get a life. Get a life. You. No, get a life. Get a life. She should get a life. And then, if the guy has walked away, let him go. It's it's uh, bye bye to whatever. Yeah, let him go. You don't need him. Okay. The second question. I'm sorry, I have to move on because of time. I've always been unlucky with love, but this time around. I found someone. Ooh. Here is the talent we have both, you know, 
uh, genetically. Oh, here mm. is the challenge. We are both not genetically, genetically compatible. compatible. We are of both AS genotypes. Mm. I'm willing to take the chances and risks involved, <laughs> but in but he isn't sure. What's your opinion on this? Maybe we could fetch something from your wealth of experience and all that. Maybe we could fetch. Okay, Joyce from London. This is a question you from Joyce know. from London. Um, that question you was not know. properly, you know, typed out. But I hope I was able to communicate to the, uh, you yeah. know, to the best I could. But the, the the long shot of it here is that two people in love, but with their genotype, they're in trouble. Hmm. What should we say to them? You no, know. Pastor. Mama, why me? <laughs> because you're a pastor, so you're going to look at it from different <laughs> angles. <laughs> she didn't mean okay. she didn't mean yeah, she didn't She's going. I'm going to come back to. Her. I yeah. uh, my intention is to start. My intention is actually to start with with our pastor, and then of course with the you know later on with the pharmacist. Okay, I would, I would let the pharmacies share, you know, um, intentionally on the medical reasons, but I would just come from the spiritual angle. But first of all, medically, you know, it's it's unadvised. It is it is not the thing to do. It is not a good decision medically. Okay, Especially as well, it, it there are two sides. I'll be very fast. The first side is. Can your faith, because I heard from the question that they are willing that she is considering giving it a chance. So the other you consider giving it a chance, please, please, is your faith strong enough to wield to such wield a responsibility? This is not praying for a house. This is not praying to have a car. This is not praying for a headache to disappear. This is not praying for a back pain to go. This is this is a, a, a condition that has to that that would in, that will have to involve the miraculous. Okay, so is your faith strong enough Attention. to contain what you are asking for? Is your okay, faith okay? So you have said it all. Mama, yes. yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mama. Many times the reason people begin to think this way is because uh, uh, people you usually want to jump at. Let's give it a chance. Let's give it a chance. Mm -hmm. But what they are failing to understand is, in other areas of that, their, their lives, what have they prayed about that they have seen tangible results? Because they would want to hold on to prayer and I will pray and the, the condition That's will awesome. change. I love will that. Okay. But other areas of their life, how have you prayed and you've seen tangible results? Okay, so you don't just jump from yes, of a couple, so we're going to get into that in a moment. <laughs> All right, um, yeah. pharmacist, what would you interject? What would be so, your response yes. to this? Crisis do occur when crisis come, will both of you be strong to hold each other to be there for one another? It doesn't stop with you, it continues with the children. Are you ready? Are you ready hmm. for a future, for a tomorrow with your children in and out of hospital? Or can your faith pull you through? The decision, the choice is yours. But whatever resultant effect common, please take it. Hallelujah. Well, I, I, I thank you. I, I wouldn't want to uh, get into it because we still have more questions. But I just would like to quickly uh, say something concerning this. Uh, the risk element is heavy. There is no doubt about it. But I actually, you know, came across young co a young couple who were willing to get married in spite of. And then when it came to me a few years ago, as a matter of fact, their parents originally said, no, it cannot happen. But when they later came to me, I asked them, all right, do you have a faith for this? Because from all indications, you read, both of you would love to go into this. And that's the difference between the young lady's question now. She is very much willing. She has faith for it, but the, the, the partner doesn't. And that's, that's a comma right there. If he is not sure, if they decide to go ahead later on and things Whatever start happening, happens, she's going to be to the be one to bear yes, the consequences. Mm -hmm. Because then he's going to I say, well, you. I was a little bit hesitant about this condition, mm -hmm. but you encouraged me into it. Now look at what has mm -hmm. happened. So that means that he might not even join her with our faith. 
in believing that they will never you. end up with that. Yeah. But I can tell you today, categorically, they had, I think, three or four children, and they're all sent with A's. With A's. None came up as S's or even A's you know with the yeah. four children yeah. why because be, of course during pregnancy and the rest of that that would be the period where she will come to me mama pray <laughs> you know and i was always praying and praying and praying and praying and glory be to god god give us a sound testimony today but that might not be your case i've also seen other couples who today are regretting ever I'm going into decision. it so uh, the choice is yours go and pray and have clarity on that but if i were you since the, your pattern is already a little bit assistant walk away no. god will give you your own husband I'm telling okay you. now Bumi from lagos says hello mama please is is it okay to get married to a man with the intention of changing mm. him mm. really mm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. he woman no no let me finish that mm. He womanizes and drinks and he drinks a lot. Okay. <laughs> Two devils drink together. What do you have to say concerning this? Let me start with the pharmacist first. I am shocked. Or a woman. <laughs> it's only God that has the power to change anyone. <clears throat> if you ask me. My plan A is stay in the marriage. My plan B is stay in the marriage. Today we have people who have plan A and have plan B. <laughs> in as much as we're expecting a miracle. No, pharmacist, can, yes, can we? Yes. Pharmacist, pharmacist, yes, you probably didn't get a question. You didn't get a question, right? So let me start all over so that you can provide the right <laughs> answer to it. All right. So it okay. says, hello, mama. Please, it is okay. Is, is it okay to get married to a man with the intention of changing him? Actually, he womanizes and drinks a lot. So they're not married yet. Yes. Is it okay to marry a man with the intention of changing him? Because he womanizes, he sleeps around. He's always, you know, in beneath. Okay, Mama, if you ask me, skates. Yes. 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 Honey, if drinks a lot. To do, then she can go ahead. If she okay. knows what she does. Uh, but if you ask me as a counselor or a relationship, I would say, I would say you know, you, your identity, you know what you want. Is this what you want? It is obvious that this is not what she wants. She wants a change or a better. He said, no, 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 no. No woman likes to no, share no, a woman no. with any. <laughs> Jehovah, eh? you how do you want this? Is it a no no, no for me? <laughs> I know. I mean, I, I think, I think our pharmacist, our pharmacist is being. She's very. You're very, you're very, very considerate woman, and I give you a big clap right there for that. Uh, I celebrate you. But drinks a lot. Hey, this man drinks a lot, and he's a womanizer. He should get delivered first. Eh? When he, when he has to give his life, obviously he's not a believer, so he needs to yes, he needs to give his life to Christ first, and then let him go through deliverance sessions. Therapy, eh? And then we give ourselves two years and make sure he's out of the bottle, and he's no longer sleeping around with anything that comes around. <laughs> Otherwise, she will live a miserable life. She's going to, she's just going to leave him. <laughs> he's like, yeah. So he's anyway, so run, 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 sister yeah. lady, please run. Yeah. Get to your heels. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is not my old material. My boyfriend joined the company I work with as a cop, as a cop member and was retained. I'm seven years older than him. I only agreed to date him because I thought he was going to go back after his NYC. Okay, so that was not really, really for a keep. He recently asked casually if I would accept if he proposes. I have grown to love him, but I'm scared the age difference is too much. Seven years. Please remember, people. Should I hand it now or follow my heart? Clara from Lagos. <laughs> okay, who is very liberal minded? Let me start with you. Because mm -hmm. then. <laughs> Who's that? 
Mm. What do you think? Mm. Seven years difference. It should not be a barrier anyway. Yes. Whether from yeah. the female to the male or from the male to the female, it shouldn't be a barrier. I don't want to call names here. There are so many celebrities I know, known celebrities I know, that are far younger than their wives. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you that I chose to marry an older wife because I know that is what I wanted. So is it come to... Far younger than their husbands. Their wives. No, than okay, their wives. Their okay. wives are older than them. Them, okay, far younger. Celebrities yes. that I know. Thank you. That's and true. when you ask them why, they will say that is what I wanted. I know myself. I know that marrying a young a wife that is, that younger. is younger than me we bring issues. So I need a woman that is far older, older than me. And today, some of them are doing twenty-five plus, and some are even approaching thirty years old. Okay, marriage. so she's in agreement with that, so. Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you have to say? I am, I am in partial agreement. Okay. Partial agreement based on three factors. Yes, based on three factors. The first thing is the only way that I will say yes to the is is the man. Many many men actually look young, but poor than how they look. Okay. So is is the man the first thing I like. I would like that lady is is he behave more mature than his age? Okay, is it there? There, there are some fifty year old men that behave like babies. There are some forty year old men that still behave like teenagers. Okay, so how is his maturity? Is he very mature, even though you are seven years older than him? So that's the first thing. Second thing is. Second thing is, if you are, are you willing to submit to a man that you are seven years older than? That's also a factor. Are you willing to submit? Will you have that mental breakdown in your head that after all, I'm your senior? You know, you know, you know, you know, who is older here? here? Come on, come on, sit down. Nonsense, yes. like money to marry you. Can't you, you, you can't decide in this house. You can't decide in this house. You can't do anything. You can't stand. I am your senior. And mother, See, you are you mother know than what? you. It gets worse. It gets worse when the woman is not just far older than him, but making more money than him. Oh, that, that's hey. a well, that's that's a disaster. disaster right there. So, mm -hmm. is he mature first? Is he more mature than his age first? Second thing, will you be able to submit to him? Third thing, mama, is the man know that you are seven years older than him? Many women don't 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 Lie. tell the man. They don't 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 tell the man. But he know. If he knows and he agrees to love you and be with you, then fine. You can go ahead. If those three factors are satisfied, it's fine. Awesome, awesome. Pharmacists, let's hear you. You know, it's in between. You know, so it's getting better. Ask them, are you compatible? Are you sure, just like Pastor has said, that you're ready to submit? Will you show him respect in and outside your home? The house. Even at your workplace, are you ready? Yes. Naked and not ashamed. Put yourself in your future. Ask yourself questions. People will make remarks at you when you go out. When age comes, menopause comes. It will show, no matter how you package it. And this man will still be looking like young Bobo. Are you ready? If you say yes, you ready? please can you go. It is your choice. It is your decision. <laughs> the pharmacist are joining. Okay. Well, you know, well, <laughs> she she was on the same zone. I mean, please, the choice is yours. It's your life. Leave it where you want it. Well, anyway, all of the above. All of, for me, for love, for me, all of the above. So we move on. <laughs> but if I must say anything at all, exactly what the pharmacist said. I mean, and then in collaboration with what the two. Uh, guests, all the guests have, have spoken about the need for you to know if you can actually respect this man is important, you know, and is immature enough. Okay, well, best we wish you all the best in your decision making based on that. Ben from Port Harcourt, greetings, Mama Helen, lovely show. Thank you, Ben. Please, man, is it okay for me to marry a short lady? Really? 
I'm a short person too. <laughs> She has all the qualities. I want to know why, but I fear for our children. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, now I'm going to start with the pharmacists. <laughs> what, do you, what, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> Mama. Oh, Lovely God. question. And I can sense his fear. Normally, you find when somebody is not so tall, I don't want to use the word short, going for a woman who is, you know, with height. So that's when that they petite. Petite. come. Petite. The children will come out, you know, beautiful and cute. But we are in we are in the global age where there are medications, there are drugs, there are food to eat, you know, to make the children come out the way you want them to come out. Even so if true. the DNA is there. So what is the component? What do you need for marriage? Does this woman have everything you need? Does she respect you? Will she work with you to create your family vision and have a wonderful home tomorrow? He's already registered yeah. the fact that she has the 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 I am very tall. My husband is tall. And then my children, whoo, they are giants. So depending on your choice. And if you want to ask me, oh yes, I went for a tall man. I wanted a man who was, you know, that will hover over me and kind of protect me. So guys, yeah. whatever you want. Like again, I would say the decision is yours. But again, aside from the size, how tall or how short, now that I'm in the marriage, I understand that the peace I get from my husband, I can actually get from a man who is short. Who is short. Exactly. So, yes. 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 It's not about the Yes, it's not about the Go for your love. Go for your love. Go for your love. Like and then make it Go. Yes. yes. That's true. She has all the qualities. Yes. In a woman, he gives you peace. You know, so, so. He gives you yes. peace. Now, where, Even apart where, from the that. question here is yes. that why did you start dating her then? In the first place. Even apart <laughs> I mean, from that. what was the attraction? She can't, she can't you know, she was, already, she was already shot then. Yes. I mean, she had, well, now that you're talking about uh, let us know, she, she has already been very petite. Mm -hmm. eh? She has always been a petite lady. Eh? And then you went for her. So, why did you go for her? Because you you have you must must not have discovered all the qualities and that you have now discovered that in her. And sweetheart, just go for it, okay? I mean, make go sure the it. children are well fed with beans and what have you. Don't just say that. <laughs> also, even the children can actually take the DNA of their parents. Grandparents, Grandparents are just, but I'm just saying like, so that we don't leave things to chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do <laughs> is to feed, <laughs> make sure you feed them right and all that, and make sure they. And before you know it, they will really, really shoot up. Okay, but that's not good enough for you to say yes or no. Qualities, please. I am dedicated. I'm a dedicated. I beg your pardon. I'm a dedicated member in the Pentecostal Church. I know I have a, a calling. But the problem is I'm currently in a relationship with a Catholic guy that has been a friend to my family for years. My parents want us to get married. I want that too, but I feel like I am choosing him over my calling since I may have to join his church after marriage. Voke from worry. Pastor. <coughs> Pastor, <laughs> you know I'll laugh, right? I'm here. So, Mama, let me please understand the question properly. They, they are both Catholics, or one is Catholic. No, 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 no. Pentecostal. From all indications, she must be a Pentecostal, and she says she has a calling. But the man she's intending to marry is Catholic. So she, I fear is that by the time they get married, is that is it is that possibility that her calling will be affected? Would the man allow her fulfill destiny? Definitely, Mama. Her calling will be affected. Mama, I don't know why many people just love to stress themselves in a marriage. You just love to stress. It is part of spiritual uh, uh, compatibility we are talking about. You just want to stress yourself. You know he's a Catholic. Why fall in love with him? Why invest so much of your feelings, your attention, and everything there? Why? You know it will never work. Do you know, for Catholics, for, 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 for anyone dating a Catholic, for instance, it is always the tendency for the Catholic person 
to switch over to the other church is very slim because they hold on to their doctrine and their faith so, so strongly. strongly. In the long run, you will be the one to switch over to his own faith. And and why, did you, why did you bother dating him? In the first place. The first place. Why? why did you, you know it will never work. You saw it from the beginning. This guy is a Catholic. It will never work. Are you ready to, to join the Catholic faith? Are you ready to be attending your Pentecostal church while your husband is the Catholic, is a separated home? That's so much stress. Mama, sometimes we need to let these younger ones know that love is not enough. I love him, it's not enough. Are other factors satisfy so as this? But, you know, I think I think the very I think the very first thing is, and thank you very much indeed, Pastor. You answered it so beautifully. But I think the the very first thing here is, you know, I mean, you this you knew you knew about this man's faith right from, from the get go. So why I invest your emotions Sorry, into a relationship <laughs> that you have already contemplated that it might not work out, or it could be a challenge to your purpose on earth? That's a big question there. However, put it this way: you have charismatic uh, movements in in, Catho in Catholic, mm -hmm. and um, those are more or less like, like Pentecostals Pentecostal. as well. All right. So the next question, or should I say, the next thing that I expect you to do, uh, since you've gone very far, is to find out: is it, uh, you know, is he into that movement? You know, charismatic movement. That's number one. Number two: have you sat him down? Have you mm -hmm. engaged? him you know to say that see god is calling me to do this um what's your opinion concerning it because you see these are some of the problems we actually have in in, in a lot of marriages okay uh the man is only just interested in, in fulfilling his vision but he does not think that a woman has a purpose to also fulfill and so if the woman tries to walk towards fulfilling her purpose then it is misconstrued to be something else, you know, even though it's still in the same line. So it's a big challenge. And I think, you know, for those who are here to get into some of this, you know, to getting married, it is very important to be able to have a sit down talk. Even if you are both Pentecostals, you can still get it wrong. The man might feel that, no, you have no right to do this and that and that. But that can only come, that can only come through conversation, through communication, where you get to agreement. know. Yes. Sweetheart, is it okay? It's recent, a couple got married recently. They're not, they live abroad now, and it's so wonderful. But when the guy was interested in her from the, from the get-go, she, she, she told him, I said, sweetheart, I'm a go-getter, and I already have a company. And I'm doing this and that. Is that going to be okay? You know, because this I would like to continue. This is who I am. I know that. And the guy said yes. Now I know him very, very well. So I mean, to I had to ask him. I said, "Okay, you've had. <laughs> I know you're, you know, you're kind of a person. Are you going to be okay with this girl fulfilling her purpose on earth?" Or you are going to frown at her because obviously, you know, you haven't even, you haven't, I mean, you haven't even gotten to the level where she is right now. So if tomorrow she intends to go ahead with this vision, are you going to stop her? And you say, oh, mama, no, 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 ma. Now that I know, you know, I love her enough to accept, you know, this aspect of her life. And this, these are the things that needs to be ironed out. Don't just go over a copy and be ordering a... Um, I, I, I need uh, chapma here. I need salad. I Can I have, I uh, you know, some, you know, some Send these? Some research cards. Yes, and so on and so forth. And you're calling all the big names in the menu. All right? This is the time to we'll talk. All you know, issues. that you've even invested your emotion. And now it's the time you are considering. I mean, it really makes me feel very bad. very bad. That means that maybe you have not listened. You have not been listening to Mama Henley and you. Because some of these issues have been high and out during the course of our programs so in essence i think what i'm trying to say here is that you need to engage him you know just being a catholic is not enough is is he a charismatic member okay okay if he is then you both have a kind of belief system however would he allow you, you to become a charismatic to become, no 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 not to become one it's not becoming one now will he allow you fulfill this aspect of your life, life. And if he's not go going to, no. take to your heels. 
right away you know and if he's just a catholic member he's he doesn't belong to a charismatic you know uh, fellowship or whatever they call, it is called uh, then you are not even compatible spiritually just like what the pastor said but mama, what happens when there is a bridge of contrast when there is a, a bridge of contrast we have had a friend talk together and you have said yes there is no issue then and then I later said, on, I do, you then you start no changing. Way it can't happen. Oh, yes. Then I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> so I was in another state of mood, and I have to tell you, yes. Mm -hmm. Now we are married. You're not telling me, no, it can't happen. It's not happen. What would the woman do then? Yeah, th that's a major oh. problem. Then, you know, so it that has bring to be. Conflicts. It will definitely bring conflict. It, will, it you has know, happened several and times. That, it has happened. As, you know, I, I call that changing the goalposts mm -hmm. after marriage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is changing the goalposts. I mean, there's been an agreement to say that you can be this, I can be that. And then later on, when everything is moving, then you now say, no, it's not possible. You can no longer be that anymore. That's a problem in itself. Okay. And it, it, most times it comes out of, out of complex. You know, insecurity, insecurity, yes, that's what I'm saying. Insecurities, and all it comes out of that, and that's not good. Excuse me, but that's not good. I think if there has been an ag agreement from the get go that it's okay for you to be this, don't change it now, don't change it now. That's that's very unchristianly as well, and it's not good. And in any case, put it this way whichever way it is, whether it's a man or woman, a woman. if you are denying your spouse the ability to be themselves, you're never going to have you're a happy yourself. spouse. You are never going to have a happy spouse. The spouse might even say, okay, right, let's go ahead. But that spouse will hate you for the rest of his or her life. Because you have not allowed them to fulfill destiny. You have not allowed them to be themselves. And that's not a good thing, you know, at all. At the end of the day, you are both one. And the, the two shall become one. That's what the Bible says. Mm. She brought that up, so I had to interject. I don't know what you think about that, Pastor. What do you have to say concerning that? Yeah, no, no, you are very correct. Changing the goalposts. Changing the goalposts. Many times, I would like to add the, on, on the foundation that you've laid already. Amazing. Many times, eh, when you have these discussions with your partner concerning whatever thing that the both of you are agreeing on to remain consistent after the courtship and in marriage, make sure you look out for for signs and a track record of his agreement okay for instance this case where you are pentecostal and he's catholic and you've talked about it and then there is a tendency that he may want to change the goalposts in marriage well have you when you guys talked about it and agreed did you see from his body language from his concerned nature That's from true. his caring you nature, can say yes 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 but his, his body is saying no 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 have you, did you support him now that you are cutting is he following you to your pentecostal movement is he supporting your books that you are writing is he accompanying you to some of your crusades and some of your live sessions is he doing all of that you may not but you may not but you can work out for for a record of agreement there is always a record of agreement from the relationship stage to the court stage and into the marriage when you guys have said that you will agree on this and it will not change look out for your uh, body language and signs that he has to be he has to be supporting you in that thing that you have you have agreed on now not later in marriage support you now Mm, it should support you now. That's it awesome. Be that it should be so. sensed. I don't know. It's like That's I'm true. seeing the movement there from our pharmacist. Mm. It's like she can't wait to say something about that. Uh, have you have you <laughs> a thought on this? <laughs> Mama, it's still I will just add a little and it's it's what I've said before. Naked but not ashamed. Let us start. As family life counselors, we've seen that we have so many in our hands. We're doing a TV show now, and people are coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up with questions. If we, if we can help these people now, it will go a long way in building and creating beauty for families. What do I mean? Naked but not ashamed. The past talk talked about. Talked about Compromise. What are you compromising? Sit down and think. Will this work? Five years after now, if you set family goals, you should know. Personal and family goals. Five years after now, where will I be? Ten years, how will it take me? 
And then ask the, yourself questions and then ask the man questions. Be naked, open. So if you look at your life with a man five years, 10 years after now, I don't do religion, I do spirituality. That he's today, she's Pentecostal. Like we say, pressures happen, life happens. They don't know what will happen today, tomorrow. They stand their ground to say, no matter whatever happens, I'm walking this journey with God till the end. Awesome. Christ Thank you very married. much. I had infertility. I had infertility. I didn't plan for it. When it came, I had so many people come in to say, come, let's go to this person. But my faith was not strong in God. I tell you, I don't be today. I knew what I wanted and I went for what I wanted. So I, I will tell you, dear girl, what do you want? Go for what you want and then stand by it. But ensure that your relationship with God is not tampered with the no-go area. And the fulfillment of your Thank purpose. Your That's very important. Him. Him to the mm. end. Amen. Awesome, awesome. We can go on. Is Maybe this is going to be a part two in this, the way I'm looking at it. Hello, man. Must love be the reason for marriage? I can't seem to find a compatible partner. <laughs> Can I try and marry for the sake of having kids? Shola from Boston. Mm. Oh my. Okay, well, um, let me know. <laughs> Who is jumping in? <laughs> Can I jump in? Who is jumping? Yes, please. Love alone is not enough. Enough. We need emotional we need skills. Emotional. We need life skills. Like I've just, I've just finished sharing my stories. And then you get married. Your in-laws are not there at the point of the future. They only come in when you're doing the traditional marriage and whatever marriage right. So you need more than love to be able to create and solve a health marriage. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Because of time, I might just have to allow her to be the only one to give an answer to that. Unless, because, but, but I'm seeing the pastor smiling. I, you know, I don't know. It's like he wants to throw in one or two words. Uh, Mama, I would like to add a little to what the panelists have said. Love is not enough, really. But it also have to, we also have to consider um, what are the criteria that the said person have been using to define love you know many people want different things from different people and when they don't see it they say i have not met the one that i love i have not met the person that i love no i was just going to say why why be unnecessarily difficult something is wrong somewhere <laughs> sometimes the, the, the rules can be very different sometimes it is not like the standards are high but more like the standards are not realistic very unrealistic <laughs> standards you are, you are just waiting for one uh, Cinderella to come uh, missing a pair of shoes and you say that is love. So what is his definition of love? Or, or what are those things that, that, that trigger love for a person? We, we should look at that as well. Because many times we have these things all twisted up. The things that we consider as, as, as a criteria or a basis for, for love for instance somebody will say on my on, on my 25th birthday the guy that that wakes me up with a peck or a, 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 a <laughs> will be the, will be the, so how can that work? Man. what is what we do how can that work it's just uh, it, it's a, it, they are all realistic expectations and all realistic standards that we've set for ourselves to to define love and it's wrong it is wrong it is wrong okay i have to run greetings mama i'm a model who is aspiring to win one of the big five international pageants but i'm currently in a courtship with a minister of a conservative church and i perceive he has a calling from god to be a great man in the ministry mama how can this work favor from Delta states she's a model and she's aspiring to be you know miss nigeria someday international pageant yes or miss world someday or miss universe. <laughs> but she's drawn to a man of god oh. <laughs> oh. 
What what have you to say concerning? What does she really think? What does she really uh, think? Uh, what does she want? Okay. Mama, I think we we'll just use we we'll just stand on the Bible premise on this one. I think it's a matter between without due respect, light and possibly a form of darkness. Okay, so <laughs> what <are you> <laughs> respect to who asked that question but it's a form of that it is the, the gap is so wide gap is so wide because i don't know maybe you first thing you should do i would advise the first thing you should do is let this pastor person know that these are goals and their aspirations okay and if they are okay with it because i know i know mama to be very honest if we are very truthful on this session to be very honest there are some men of god that don't really pay too much attention to how they have wives dress you know there are some that don't mind so you might be one of those pastors that don't mind if their wife shows up a little flesh here and there or they may want to marry they may be pastors but they want to marry a a, a nikki minaj you know because they have one pastors too have fantasies <laughs> fantasy <laughs> so, you know, there are so many scenarios mama so many scenarios he may want to marry a supermodel secretly that maybe he may not even yeah, want to have to involve the ministry okay she may just be having a thing house and be the mother out outside but there are some i know of pastors like like that mama that they, their wives are not the head of the women meeting in the church their wives are into business and other things they have some other women that are, 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 are holding the fort when it comes to women's fellowship and being the mother in the church so there are pastors that don't mind talk with your your man so if he sees it as something that can go on along with his ministry then it's fine otherwise i would advise you that those are it is it is it is postponed pain that's how i call it mama, call it, mama. Postponed pain. because it's i mean obviously the, it's going to be contrary to who he yes. is yes. and then later on he's going you to say so that you have, you have to drop this ambition later. how about later will you the, work out later when god exactly. starts raising the man of god when god starts raising the man of god will this same thing work out you may not be comfortable that's when you start seeing a man of God attending conferences and functions without his wife. But for the reason, if he's a minister, that the wife okay. is not a ministry material. The wife is not a ministry material. Well, that, that's a good thing. I mean, now, let, let me come out from this angle. If this is what, I mean, if this is her profession, if this is what he has been doing, all right, but she's ready to modify it you know in the sense that you know i mean for example let, let me be honest with you i used to be in fashion okay i used to be I've, I've i've handled a lot of things in my life to be honest sometimes when i sit down you know i wonder you know and i used to train models i used to train models i you know apart from being a banker having my other organized you know that construction company rural education and all the other things that i was doing then as a young lady okay and of course at the same time an assistant pastor you know in a church you know so it's a complete combination but then of course getting married to a pastor no one is to tell me that hey you can't go on training models anymore now you have to train women <laughs> hard to you know carry themselves and all that because Hey, courage matters to me a great deal. So, I mean, you know, these are, these are some of the things that I wanted us to really consider. If this is what she, if, I mean, is she ready to forgo that? that is she ready to me. walk yeah, away yeah. from that? I think, I think that's extremely important. And there are other ways that, you know, by which she can actually express ourselves, you know, without having, you know, to still continue to be a model or desiring to be a pageant in any case she cannot even be a pageant because when she's married that goal is is gone with, it's gone with whether she, she's married to a pastor yes whether she's married to a pastor or not because i, I was once a pageant <laughs> yes I've, I've done many things in life you know i've done many things in life but of course you can't you know i mean a time comes when you say no you know you know this is a new life entirely so what I'm saying is, if, I mean, 
as soon as you are married, you can no longer be Do a pageant. No, no, you can no longer be a pageant. Yeah. You can no longer, because they're not even going to allow you into that race because we expect someone who is single, who, who, you know, and all that stuff. That's what is expected. So I think she's getting some little things mixed up somehow. And it is to let her know that, oh, sweetheart, um, you, you can't, you can't, who says you cannot even open, a, you know, a modern it's school? Modern school. You can make, yeah, open modern a modern school. school. Right. Yes, a modern school that will have other things in it that, that, will, that teaches on etiquette. Okay. You know, know that you know public speaking. You know, there are so many things that you can put Let's into being here with what with the kind of talent that you already have. And at the end of the day, it will work out so beautifully uh, well with you. So I think in a nutshell, we've been able to dance around what the, you know your options are, and then it's left for you now to decide on what you can do. You can have the two words, but you have to now have it in a different you know in a different way still fulfilling destiny but in a different way entirely and then of course you can't go in for pageant once you are I'm married married. just in case if you don't know that okay that's the end of it you know you can't do that whether you are going to be marrying a pastor or not is a no-no well it has been a long and beautiful day i mean uh guests have been fabulous they have been incredibly good i mean with all the nuggets the wisdom and all that they've shared with us today i can see some homes that would definitely be healed and i can see some lives that would definitely be transformed and for those who are also intending to get married of course you have a, a, a program that has offered you well enough information to help you but as we draw a cut into today's uh, program i'd like to ask our guests one after the other okay about compatibility and how do you make it work just give us your thoughts on this you know as we move ahead let me start with our guest in house thank you mama we had a wonderful time today together Pharmacist, thank you so much. What am I, the pastor? pastor. Thank you. <laughs> pastor Hallison, yes. thumbs up. Yes. Okay, um, our viewers at home just need to know this that without compatibility, stress in the home becomes more, more difficult to endure. So, true. so, for you to be strong, for you to be resilient, and for you to actually face life challenges as they come because mm -hmm. they will come mm -hmm. life will happen it will happen you have to to a so large extent we are not saying that you have to be a hundred percent compatible with your partner but to a large extent there must be some forms of some level of there yeah. must be some forms of similarities between you okay and your spouse. spouse but there is no compatibility at all physically there's no compatibility financially there is none socially there is none mentally there is none spiritually zero ah <laughs> it's crisis it's, everywhere mm. you know so that is key if you are if you are intended couples come together and ask all the necessary questions that you need to ask but first and foremost like pastor has said Get to know yourself, who you are, and everything. That is the basic foundation. That's the basic foundation. Then you're already married, and you are complaining that my wife is not compatible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not compatible with my wife. I'm not compatible with my husband. Please, let's have a round table talk. Let there be a frank conversation between the couples involved. And like Pastor said something I said, work more on your strengths than on your weaknesses. Work more. On your strengths Focus and on, on your it. weaknesses. So let them have that front talk and dwell more on where we are strong. These are my strengths. So yeah, since you are good in this, and do this. Since I'm good at this, I do this. And before you know what is happening, that's the truth. Conflicts are reducing. Issues are going off. That's actually and there is not going to be more peaceful coexistence yes. between husband and wives. The ability to allow each it's other so function. Key. In their like area I said of earlier, those three pillars. Agreement, adaptability, and attunement is key. It's key. Every couple should learn how to do it. Every couple should end. Awesome. It awesome. Needs to be tough All right. Okay. Um, our pharmacist, what have you to have to say about that, please? Okay. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. And I'm sending peace and love to my fellow guest speakers. To the audience, to be compatible means your goals must align. Your principles must align. Value system 
them should align. Your life philosophy and whatever drives you should align. Add, accept your areas of disagreement. Be open-minded. Show care and concern. Exhibit tolerance. Foster trust. Take time for empathy. That is putting yourself in your partner's shoes. Be open to life experiences. And lastly, authentic. Be real. You can see that we have come here, we've shared our stories from mama to the guest. They're telling you just how we feel. Authentic. Thank you very much. As I wish all of us a happy life. To those who are in it already, enjoy, please. To those who are in it, I wish you love, love, love. Thank you. Thank you so very much. That was beautifully done. Yes, Pastor. Yes, Mama. Thank you so much for the privilege to share fellowship with you. Thank you so much to the uh, the, the lecturer and the pharmacist. It's been an honor already. Uh, my final talk on compatibility is just i'm just going to be very honest i'm just going to be on, very honest the first thing is don't expect to find someone that matches your strength 100 percent don't expect to find everything all figured out 100 percent allow to make their mistake allow your partner to vulnerable listen listen allow them to be vulnerable listen uh, being being perfect 100 percent is boring i can tell you this from a standpoint of marriage your you and your wife you are the same on every ground it is boring you may think hey we are the same so everything we will just gel 100 percent in marriage and oh no and oh no you will you will you, you know you will excuse some differences it mustn't have to be 100 percent, okay and if you are looking out for compatibility look out for 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 compatibility on the long run not short-term compatibility long run compatibility all of this i like your hair you look nice you smell well you smell you i, I like how you talk i like how you smile those are just short-term compatibility thing may things may happen and then the goalposts will, will change okay look for long term what spiritual goals what are your core values what are your goals concerning um, uh, uh, money what, what are your values concerning attraction how do we relate with our in-laws how do we relate with our friends what do you have to say about accountability in our marriage asking important questions in the getting to know you stage not all is your favorite color what's your favorite food who is your favorite artist what's your favorite song all of those things don't hold well in marriage i can't remember the last time I my wife and i had that conversation of who is your favorite actor who is your it doesn't happen but we didn't build our marriage on all of that ask relevant intentional questions that will reveal a lot of your partner's personality not what's your shoe size what's your no no all of those things are important but they're not the primary basics okay, okay. I, I pray for you the marriage of the amen. Amen. amen oh my god oh my god it has been a wonderful time just being with those people it has been wonderful. Oh. I want to start by appreciating uh, Pastor Harrison at St. Todd. Thank you so very much indeed. It has been a pleasure having you with us. And then um, pharmacist in your bunk, Jaxer. Thank you so very much indeed. I mean, it's been awesome just hearing you out today. Thank you for your wealth of experience. And then, of course, for um, Mrs. Eloho Egu Yenga. Thank you, Mama. Thank you so very much Thank again. You, Thank and you, then for all our artists and then, of course, the Family Corner uh, presenters, you've done extremely well. We are extremely grateful. Um, for having you on set with us today. And um, we're also, we're all talking about compatibility and then the need for us to choose the right. Now, two things here, if you're married already and this happens to be a great challenge to you, just like we have been told in the book of Genesis chapter two, verse 18, the Bible says, I will find for a man, it's because it is not good for him to be alone. Mm -hmm. And I will give him and help meet someone who is suitable, someone who is going to assist them to fulfill vision. Because in it is you, that woman coming into the man's life, helping him to fulfill vision, she would also be able to fulfill 
her yeah, own vision. vision, you know, as well. This does not stop you both of you having a purpose-driven life than all that. But one thing I've always discovered is that it's always very interwoven. So you can still make things work, okay? Learn how to be intimate, even if you don't have that already with you. Learn how to strike some level of communication amongst each other. Because with that communication, it is definitely impossible for you to have intimacy. And one of the things that is actually killing, you know, marriages today is the fact that, you know, there is lack of incompatibility. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, intimacy. Intimacy, I was going to say, you know, between couples. And then, of course, um, that in, in itself is enough to kill every aspect of marriage. So work on your marriage. Be intentional about how you want to make your marriage work. If there is no commitment from both of you, evidently that marriage is not going to work. So see how you can also discover, even though there are differences, but there would be some areas where where you're compatible and focus more on that okay in any case i mean just like the pastor said if you're both good on one on the same purpose everything. then everything will be boring. So boring if god is going to be bringing an empire into your life evidently you're not going to be at the same wavelength it will mean that okay somebody is bringing something that is missing in your life that needs to be hearted and so see each other from from that angle and see how you can make your uh, your marriage beautiful and wonderful but if you are yet to get married you can get it right from the get-go okay you don't need to start getting in and finding it difficult when there are so many things available to you now information that is that you can actually glean from so glean from what you have heard today hey get it right make sure he has some level of value system, your, um, you know, you, the vision that is not contrary uh, or that is not contradictory uh, to, your, to what you believe in and all that. And at the end of the day, amongst all, let make sure that he is a child of God. He loves God. And then, of course, we both love each other. Um, I wish you all the best in your decision making and whatever you decide uh, to do. But make sure that... Christ is the center of that home. No, and it should only be the third party that is allowed. In you and in him, you can actually make it happen. Be you, do you, and be blessed. We love you. God bless you. Mwah!